to Live from the State Capitol with Fred Dicker here on Talk 1300. Welcome back to the State Capitol Off-Air. We're talking motorcycles with uh, Jeff Gildersleeve, who's joining us right now. Jeff is a uh, senior investigator in the Warren County Sheriff's Office right now, but he spent many, many years as a top investigator with the New York State Police dealing with organized crime, and most specifically uh, drug crimes. He was involved in many task forces with the U.S. Uh, DEA and other agencies working cooperatively with him. And last week it came out that the Warren County Sheriff endorsed uh, Jeff Gildersleeve for Sheriff of uh, Saratoga County, an unusual endorsement, although we should note that um, Mike Zerlo, who is his opponent tomorrow in the Republican primary, is uh, endorsed by the current Sheriff of Saratoga County, who uh, is retiring. And with that, just as a quick background, let's welcome Jeff uh, Gildersleeve to the show. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Fred. Thanks for having me. You've never run for office before. You really weren't a political creature, the way I think it's fair to say your opponent's a political creature. How are you feeling a day before it all comes uh, you know, down to the wire? It's down to the wire now. Uh, you know what? I'm feeling really good. Uh, everything, every indicator we're getting is our support seems to be growing everywhere uh, for a variety of reasons. But uh, in the door-to-door, the phone calls, it's just been tremendously positive for me and uh, I, I've got great good hopes going into this thing tomorrow. Well you're running against almost the entire Republican organization that's using resources that didn't used to be allowed legally to be used against uh, someone who they didn't support but they're now allowed to do it in a primary. You have the endorsements whether it's a congressman or a state senator uh, for your opponent. Uh, how uh, are you able to stand up to the uh, whole Saratoga County Republican organization with any hope of winning? How is that going to happen? Uh, the volunteers that have been showing up at these events for us have been incredible. Uh, we actually had, uh, every weekend, we've got a large group of volunteers coming out to go out and walk, put signs up, uh, make phone calls. Last weekend, we actually had a, a gentleman drive up from Poughkeepsie. He knew no one in, in uh, my group. He, knew, he didn't know me. He just heard about me online and wanted the help. And he came up, drove up from Poughkeepsie, spent the day, walking around, knocking on doors, and then went back to Poughkeepsie. What a phenomenal guy. Is this mainly because of your very strong op opposition to the governor's so-called SAFE Act, or is there other reasons as well? Well, that seems to be a large factor, um, but that's not the only factor. There's a lot of people that I think that are tired of the machine telling them how they should vote. Uh, a tremendous amount of people are really interested in getting involved in the process and having a say. They don't want to be told who their candidate is. By the way, how did your uh, debate with Mike Zerlo go? Uh, well, I was there <laughs> waiting. Um, you know, it, it kills me because uh, he's come up with a few different stories, and uh, one of them is that I'm a one-issue um, candidate, and I'm thinking, how would he know that? Uh, he hasn't debated me. Uh, he also claimed that he didn't get notice about uh, when uh, the debate was uh, – Soon enough, I think it was 22 days before, <laughs> and somehow he couldn't uh, squeeze an hour in for me. So I'm you know, kind of disappointed with that. I'm uh, disappointed with the media out there, the local media, which hasn't focused on the fact that Zerlo is obviously just running for cover, uh, not wanting to debate you. He refused over and over again to debate you. I thought that should have been a major factor in uh, editorials that were written about this race and news stories about it. Normally the press cares about uh, letting the public be informed, uh, especially down in New York City when they push public financing of elections. They say, well, that also requires you to debate, which is so important. I agree that debating is important, but here's the Saratogian story yesterday where they clearly buried their lead. Uh, they apparently caught Zerlo, uh, your opponent, lying to them. And the Saratogian wrote, invited by the Saratogian with three weeks notice to attend a one-hour public primary forum between himself and Gildersleeve. And I would note that's not even a debate, it's just a forum. Zerlo initially said he could not rearrange a previously planned meeting. But when pressed, he conceded that was not the case. So what does that mean? He just lied directly to them? What did you make of that? That's exactly how I took it. And, <laughs> I, and, and honestly, then the paper let him get off the hook on it without explaining, asking him a follow-up question. Mr. Zerlo, why did you do that? Why did you initially tell us that? And by the way, with three weeks to go, now that you admit that you misled us, why don't you agree to it, the real debate? And there's nothing like that in the story. And... Uh, when I was in there, uh, I told them, I said, if you can set it up at midnight in the back parking lot, I'll be there. I don't care when, where, or how. I said, let's do this. I said, let's allow people the opportunity to see us stand by, standing side by side discussing the issues. 
And if they don't like me, then great. But at least give me the opportunity to put my ideas out there and look and see what kind of a guy he is and if he actually has any original ideas, which I don't think really he does. Jeff, when you were on the show a couple of weeks ago, um, and just after you left, uh, someone, uh, Lisa Bruno is her name, from um, Senator Dean Skelos' staff, came over here and asked if I would put your opponent on the show. And I said, sure, I'd be happy to put him on. He was on Wednesday. I didn't really know what to expect, and by the time he was done uh, being interviewed by me, I was quite uh, surprised and in some ways shocked that he was as ineffective as he turned out to be, and not just ineffective, but uh, I thought uh, disingenuous, I thought embarrassingly uh, unable to explain himself on a few things, including why he wouldn't debate you. You know, on the show he admitted that he had only joined the National Rifle Association a few months ago and said the reason he joined was because he was going to run for election, not because he believed what they stand for. What did you make of uh, that interview? And, and, and I ask you that in the context of my understanding that your campaign is now using that in, uh, interview because you think it helps you in terms of the campaign. I think it just showed him for what he is. He's a weak candidate. He doesn't have any original ideas. He doesn't have the backbone to get behind one idea and stick with it. Uh, the SAFE Act, for example, uh, he has changed his mind on that several times throughout the campaign. And you know what? Just get a backbone, make a decision, and stick to it. And uh, he's been unable to do that on numerous issues. And uh, the, the debate's another perfect example of that. Last week, it looked like Governor Cuomo was trying to uh, help Jeff Zerlo uh, by uh, making a strong statement about sheriff's obligations to enforce the SAFE Act. Uh, I don't think the governor said the same thing about some other laws that he doesn't necessarily agree with, but that uh, is neither here nor there. Do you think the governor was trying to help help Jeff uh, Zerlo? Uh, yeah, Jeff, uh, uh, excuse me, Mike Zerlo. And uh, do you think if, in fact, uh, uh, Governor Cuomo was living in Saratoga County and was a Republican, he'd be voting for uh, Mike Zerlo tomorrow? Apparently, and uh, Governor Cuomo uh, are apparently aligning themselves with certain issues. And... Uh, as the Republican uh, candidate, Mike Zerlo should be concerned that he's in such close agreement with our uh, governor on the SAFE Act. What do you make of uh, Jim Bowen, who's a respected law enforcement guy? I mean, I knew, I've known Joan, Jim Bowen. Bef I knew him I, before he became sheriff, dating myself. But here he is out there, very strongly supporting um, Mike Zerlo. Uh, I know a lot of people think that, they th that Zerlo would simply be uh, Jim Bowen's uh, kind of hand puppet, his creature, if he is elected as uh, sheriff, ultimately. But why do you think somebody with Jim Bowen's a strong background, and he's a, he was, I guess, a strong leader of the Sheriff's Department, would want someone like Mike Zerlo? Um, I, I think he's just supporting the guy he knows. And uh, he wants, uh, ultimately, I think he wants the ability to have a hand still in the department. And uh, by having Zerlo there, he would have that ability. Well, the way Zerlo sounded on this show, and I think the way he's been conducting himself, he's uh, let a lot of people believe that he'd be someone else's sheriff, that he'd be the creature of a lot of other people who would who are behind him now, including the Republican organization in the county. Uh, and I think that's the case. I mean, uh, he certainly is being propped up by the Republican Party, and uh, I don't think he's his own man. Yeah, am I right in understanding that Senator Kathy Marchone has not endorsed in this primary? That's correct. What do you make of that? And do you think that uh, that uh, represents uh, at least an in, you know, kind of a behind-the-scenes indication that she would like to see you elected? I would hope that that's the case. I really would. Uh, I've met her, and I think she's a very stand-up uh, individual. And I would hope that uh, she stayed out of it just because um, she didn't want to be wrapped up in the whole party machine politics in Saratoga County. Of course, the party organization had opposed her as well, did they not? Uh, yes, they did. So she knows a thing or two about uh, the organization. I mentioned to, um, I was hinting uh, or suggesting this to um, Jeff Klein a little while ago, the uh, Dem independent Democratic leader. Uh, in the Senate, and I spoke at some length about it with uh, Brendan Quinn last Friday on the show, the former executive director of the Republican Party, that in fact the Republican Party in New York is really broken <clears throat> in half with a downstate, very kind of liberal-oriented, very New York City-oriented, Dean Skelos wing, and then an upstate, much more uh, conservative, much more libertarian, much more pro-gun rights uh, block or a branch of the Republican Party, and that this primary that you have going on in Saratoga will be viewed around the state as a kind of a surrogate battle between the downstate, the more uh, Governor Cuomo-oriented Republicans, and upstate uh, Republicans who uh, have turned against the governor, that's for sure. Do you agree with that kind of analysis? Is it, in fact, it's a, a, a referendum on some bigger issues than simply uh, Gildersleeve and Zerlo? You know, I, I'd like to think that <clears throat> 
we are uh, doing our own thing, but I really think that you've hit the nail on the head. This has turned into an issue uh, much greater than the Saratoga County Sheriff's race. I think it's turned into upstate, downstate, uh, Republican, Democrat. It's it's grown well beyond the borders of Saratoga County. And and just based on the people that are coming out to help me, um, I got I have to bet they're very motivated to um, get involved in this race. Well, I got a call on Saturday from uh, Bren <laughs> Brendan Quinn. He was amused because he said some uh, people canvassing for you had knocked on his door in Wilton and uh, suggested that they ought to listen uh, to the um, Zerlo interview on the Fred Dicker show. And Brendan said to them, I was just on that show yesterday that he was well aware of it. And he said they were kind of surprised saying, who are you? And he told them that he had been a very active uh, Republican for a long, long time, which is certainly the case. But I was impressed by the fact that there are people out there knocking on doors. And I'm sure your opponent is doing the same thing. About how many people do you think, um, uh, Jeff, are in the field uh, for Jeff Gildersleeve? Uh, every weekend it changes, but we've been averaging at least 50 per weekend, um, and consistently uh, people are coming out. And then we've got other volunteers that are actually involved in the uh, phone banks. So uh, I really couldn't give you an accurate number because I'm not actually in charge of that. Yeah. But uh, I would say upwards of 75 people per week. You think that makes much of a difference at door-to-door -door stuff? I mean, I think uh, a lot of people uh, don't like to have their doors knocked on by people soliciting, uh, you know, whatever it may be, including uh, political candidates, or do you think it is a positive? It's almost kind of funny because uh, the reaction I get when I go to the door, because I've been doing a lot of door-to-door -door stuff too, is uh, the initial reaction is you're trying to sell them something, and when they realize you're there to talk about uh, the, the race, most people have been very, very kind and interested and involved. Um, I, I'm surprised at the number of people are actually um, that know who I am and uh, want to hear what I have to say. So well, I've gotten a tremendous uh, reaction from most people. I'd say easily 90% of the people I've spoken to have been very positive. That's very nice. Well, to what extent do you think you're being uh, matched or uh, maybe uh, overmatched by your opponents who, after all, uh, do control the re Republican organization in Saratoga County. Do they have at least as many and maybe a lot more people out there, do you think? You know, I, I, I've been hearing uh, differing uh, tales, some where they've had some uh, good volunteers sh show up, and I've heard others where they've actually had almost no volunteers show up. So it's, uh, I, it's going to boil down to tomorrow, Fred. I mean, uh, I'm hoping for a good turnout. I tell people all the time, I said, you know what, vote for me or vote for the other guy, but vote. Yeah. And if you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain after the, the process is over. What do you make of John Herrick, who's the new county leader in Saratoga County for the Republicans? I guess he had succeeded Jasper Nolan. Yeah. And uh, apparently he has his own political ambitions. Is that right? He does. And, uh, you know, I think probably he's regretting um, backing one candidate in this thing. He probably should have let the process work. Um, I, I'm, I know he's surprised at the level of resistance he's gotten from uh, the people that are supporting me. And, um, again, I think he probably regrets that uh, he came out early for uh, my opponent. We're talking to Jeff Gildersleeve, of course, who's one of two candidates on the ballot tomorrow in Saratoga County, the Republican uh, nomination for sheriff. Uh, just quickly, uh, Jeff, I heard from one listener who wanted to hear a little bit more, not about the uh, gun law, the SAFE Act, but your plans to modernize, I guess, from... Um, technological point of view, the Sheriff's Department, and your critique of it, uh, and you have made a critique behind the times in terms of uh, technologies. Well, uh, there's so many things, and it's almost um, almost comical. It's not really. Uh, every day it seems I get a new revelation about things that need to be, get done, but initially the technological aspect of it. Law enforcement today requires um, the ability to get online, requires the ability to communicate easily and quickly through email. Uh, requires uh, almost everything requires that these days it's unbelievable I, I was shocked and, and I think and what do they have now up there if you they could. have they have an internal email system but it doesn't allow them to email outside of the department which is you know it's great if you're doing internal communications but it, for example it's not even it, really an email system it, it's, it's like not, a messaging system it, it's a closed off it messaging system yeah, for example if I want a picture from another law enforcement agency I'll reach out either by email or by call sure. and I'll have a picture emailed to me in seconds and it's uh, you know picture quality uh, as opposed to what they're doing now is through fax machines and everything else as they can't can get, get an place. email from another agency they cannot that's hard. That's, uh, what's the you know what the explanation of that is? Is Jim Bowen admit that that's the case? You wonder. I mean, it doesn't even take that much money to uh, put in the system like you're talking about. I have no idea what the reasoning behind it is. Uh, the other thing is they have no um, 
no ability to leave uh, voicemails for specific officers. There should be a voicemail system so, because if you get a call at three o'clock in the morning and or you saw a, a complaint at three o'clock in the morning, you want to speak to that officer again about what's going on with my case. Right now, unless you call him when he's working, you're not going to get a call back. So you need to, the ability to leave messages and you have a site where for people to leave messages and certainly an email system because what could be easier than firing an email off to an officer and then when he comes into work at midnight rather than calling you, you can respond in an email and, and you know what's going on with your case. Um, it's also critical for keeping up with the, the district attorney's office, with the courts. Sure. Uh, it's just, it, to me, it's a black hole as far as um, being unable to do their job completely. You've also talked about uh, television arraignments, which are done all around the nation, I believe. Is that right? And there's nothing like that in uh, Saratoga right now? There is not. Uh, the first time I saw that actually was a uh, federal initial appearance. We had a case. It was one of the earlier meth lab cases we worked in the task force. We had to drive uh, the, the defendants to Binghamton, and there was no federal magistrate available. And uh, the U.S. attorney down there said, no worries. We plunked him down in front of a computer terminal, and he had his initial appearance from a magistrate sitting either in Albany or Syracuse. And uh, they emailed us the uh, commitment order, and we dropped him off at the Broome County Correctional Facility. And there's no problem doing that in New York? That can be done uh, I think right legally? now, I think there's a couple of counties that are actually doing uh, test programs with it right. right now. And I think the, the biggest objection uh, right now is the defense bar. Um, for whatever reason. Uh, I think for obviously for serious cases uh, in county court you may want to bring the defendants straight up to the county court and let them sit before the judge but with uh, the other stuff going on in town courts I think most of it can be handled very easily by uh, doing a video, yeah. video arraignment. Just one last thing we're almost out of time. I thought perhaps the most absurd thing Mike Zerlo said when he was on my show was that he was going to consult once a month, I think, with local high school students to find out what should be done to fight crime in Saratoga County. I mean, did you also, were you struck by the absurdity of such a notion? I was, actually. And, you know, I'm a, a big advocate for going in and talking to high school students. I, I've been doing it for years. Um, and, but what I go in and talk to them about is the reality of what happens with drugs. Yeah, I mean, they have the questions of kids. They don't have the answers. They want to learn from people who are experienced professionals. Uh, the idea that a sheriff goes in and asks the kids, what should I do? I mean, it's preposterous. And I was kind of struck by the fact that he didn't think there was a drug problem. I mean, we've had right. two armed robberies of uh, pharmacies in recent months in Saratoga County. It, it, yeah, I... Oh, did you hear? He, apparently, he's claimed he hasn't claimed it to me. I didn't hear anything from him, but he's claimed, or his people have claimed that somehow I set him up on this show. I, I mean, was, he was the one who wanted to come in here. I didn't even ask him to come on. And uh, you virtually asked him the same questions you asked me. Absolutely. Uh, with the exception, I think, of the lawsuit and the, the debate issue, uh, but that was on him. And who? Do you know who this Lisa Bruno is? She was the one who had come in here and asked me to put him on the air. I, as she's, I said, I wasn't even going to do it. Uh, she's a big Zerlo supporter. Does she live up in the county? Do you know? I guess uh, she works Stillwater, for Stillwater. She, okay, she and she works for a senator, uh, uh, Skelos, apparently in the um, in the uh, what do you call it? The uh, finance uh, for the finance committee. Well, listen, Jeff Gildersleeve, best of luck. We appreciate you coming in. You're a stand-up guy, as far as I'm concerned. You would have debated Zerlo if he had agreed to do it anytime, would, anywhere? Anytime, anywhere. It would have been my pleasure. Well, maybe there's still enough time, but uh, you know, uh, Zerlo is going to have to check his schedule. I guess it's pretty well booked up. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it is. And if it isn't, he'd make sure it will be. But uh, good luck tomorrow. It's not easy being in the political system. Thanks for coming in this morning. This is Fred Dicker, live at the State Capitol. My thanks to uh, Jeff Gildersleeve, to Jeff uh, Klein, to all my listeners. Until tomorrow which is primary day. Get out and vote if you're eligible. Have a great day. Bye-bye. WGDJ Rensselaer is Talk 1300. Paul Vandenberg mornings, Fred Dicker at 10, and Melody Burns on the ride home. Stimulating local talk.